Hey, what's up, Street Talks? It's Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. So, I know it's been a while since we chatted, but I wanted to do a quick video about sharing some of the experiences I had photographing my own wedding. Na, 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 na. Uh, so, first of all, for those of you guys uh, who don't know, uh, really excited on June 11, 2016, I married the love of my life, uh, Cindy. And some of you guys might have followed the Cindy project over the uh, over the last few months. And it was, of course, one of my most special and memorable days uh, in our relationship together. And while I don't think the marriage is the most important day of the relationship, I, I much think that the days after the relationship, uh, are living our lives together until death do us part is going to be the most important thing. And of course, being some of, uh, being one of the most important days of my life. And you know how I've been talking more about uh, advocating for personal photography is taking photos of your own life um, and being reflective about what's really important to your life rather than always going outside and taking photos of other people's lives. And so, yeah, I, I decided that I wanted to take photos of my own wedding. Uh, I was actually inspired by my buddy, uh, Robbie Larson, who actually did the same at his wedding. And of course, at first I needed Cindy to sign off. And uh, oh yeah, also as a disclaimer, I did not shoot my entire wedding just by myself. Uh, I was very fortunate to have my really good friend, uh, Neil, and uh, my manager, uh, Neil Ta, uh, be the first shooter for the wedding, and also my buddy, uh, Brandon Fan, who was the second shooter, and also my younger cousin, uh, Regina, she shot video. And so for the, the wedding, you know, I just had my, uh, my, my wedding coat on, and inside the small little suit pocket, I was able to fit the little Ricoh GR, the digital one. And originally I was thinking about shooting it in film, but um, several things, <laughs> all my film cameras, uh, I either have them out on loan to some of my friends. And uh, the only camera I have with me is the film Leica, and I just really wouldn't want to carry it around my neck while I was actually in the wedding. And essentially my plan on the day of the wedding, uh, taking photos was to take some behind the scenes photos from the groom's perspective and also the bride's perspective that often wedding photographers don't really have a chance to glimpse. So all the photos I shot you know, wasn't actually during the wedding procession, but rather uh, on the car ride over to the wedding, um, you know, in the changing rooms, uh, me getting ready in the morning. And also what was really important to me was photographing and documenting the process before the wedding date. So all the hard work that I had to get um, put into making the wedding possible so uh, going shopping for the dress and yes i did see the dress before uh, the wedding date uh buying the dress with cindy getting my tux um uh sending out emails writing out cards and one thing i also try to do is not only document the actual day of the wedding but also the days after the wedding so uh we went on a one week honeymoon to mexico city amazing city some of the best food in the world and uh yeah all shot on the rico and one of the decisions of shooting the entire thing in black and white was, you know, while I do love color photography, and my buddy Josh White tells me this all the time, is that he feels that my color photos have more soul and they're more personal, there's still something timeless about black and white that I feel that um, perhaps is a little bit more meditative for me or perhaps is a little bit more personal to me. And also feel that black and white, you know, as cliched as, as it is, I think they'll just age better as time goes on. And even for purely archival reasons, you know, color fades, but black and white stays more or less black and white as time goes on. And also, even with the Rico, I find, you know, it, sometimes it gets good colors, but I think just the black and whites in it tend to look way better. And so in terms of what to photograph, um, photographing selfies of myself, photographing uh, photos of my tux, uh, hanging photos of Cindy, uh, when we're exchanging our first uh, letters, even when uh, towards the end of the wedding on the dance floor, I had the Rico and I was shooting photos of my friends uh, using the flash quite a bit. And for those of you who are curious about the actual wedding day, yeah, it was it was a beautiful Catholic wedding. Uh, we're both Catholic, and so we had it at um, a local church. We had uh, some of our closest friends and families and our loved ones uh, join us on that day, and. The, the really special things that people mentioned was uh, the fact that we had both uh, Vietnamese and Korean ceremonies. So in Korean, um, there's the hanbok ceremony where I'm wearing this old school like Korean outfit and uh, also let to tien slash uh, the Vietnamese tea ceremony, which is also really important to Cindy's side of the family who's Vietnamese. 
And yeah, and in terms of the venue, we had at this indoor venue, we did a lunchtime wedding, uh, really, you know, kind of this vintagey Parisian themed wedding, and it was all pre decorated, which is lovely. But yeah, once again, one of the most wonderful days of my life. Um, if you're watching this video and you're getting married in the near future, or you know someone's getting married, or you know, like a bar mitzvah, or just you know, any sort of really big day to celebration love. I, I do really believe that it's important to to document it um, if you feel like your heart wants to. Also, really important to get the the approval of your loved ones because you know if you don't have your your partner 100% on board with it, it's gonna be a source of contention. And Cindy, when seeing uh, the the wedding prep photos, she said, "Wow, your your wedding your photos are so beautiful. You should be a wedding photographer," which was actually a huge compliment for me. And so taking all these photos and looking back, I feel like uh, definitely in the behind the scenes moments when I was able to shoot kind of more inconspicuously. And the thing that was also wonderful is all the guests told me, we didn't even see you take photos, which is great because I wasn't, you know, sitting on the altar just taking photos, but um, doing it kind of more hidden. And looking back at these photos, I'm really glad that I documented my own wedding because I'm sure years to come and also our future children are going to have a chance to look back at these photos and be really appreciative of... Um, looking at these wonderful moments from my uh, perspective. Also shooting my own wedding helped me, I feel like even be in the moment a little bit more because I had to be much more cognizant of all the details and to really uh, cherish and and pick these things up. And uh, anyways, the dogs are starting to, to bark, but uh, I'm gonna talk, uh, check the Air Kim blog to see uh, more photos and detailed stories about how I was like photographing my own wedding. And yeah, if you're interested in photographing your own wedding, use a small point shoot camera, even use your, your smartphone, whatever it may be. And it could be a really wonderful gift for your, your partner, yourself, and your future family. All right, guys, until next time, talk more soon. Peace.